Today we celebrate Epiphany Sunday, <clears throat> marking the arrival of the Magi at the manger. The, the arrival of these wise men serves as a bookend, closing the Advent Christmas season, these lovely, gentle, star-filled weeks, all that have culminated in the birth and the celebration of Christ's birth. As we close this special season and 2023 dawns, feelings of anxiety and apprehension can often return. And while the new year brings for sure challenges or opportunities and possibilities, it can also bring new challenges. There's little argument that the last few years have been hard for people across the globe, in our neighborhoods, in our churches, and in our families. And a quick peek into 2023 can appear foreboding as Russia continues to pummel the people of Ukraine, as tensions with China and North Korea continue to escalate, and at home, the death toll from the recent winter storm of the century continues to grow. And so, as we move boldly or maybe timidly into the new year, I'd like for us to take a few moments and revisit hope. Hope is the first of the Advent candles that we light, the first of the messages that we receive, but in the fullness and the swiftness of the Advent and Christmas season, its message can get lost as we speed on to other themes of joy and peace and love. Verse 12 of our scripture reading today from the Apostle Paul reminds us, Again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. This reading is an echo of one of our Advent readings from Isaiah 11, where the prophet Isaiah is writing to a community where optimism has proven false. The people's country has been conquered they have been ripped from their homes and sent into exile, and they've lost much of what they deeply valued, possibly forever. And it is in this context that we read these words from Isaiah, a shoot shall come out of a stump, a branch from his roots. This was not a promise that everything was gonna turn out fine, but it was a promise that life would go on. Ben Joshua Davis, the director of applied research at the Bangor Theological Seminary, describes his own experience with great personal failure with a church that he and his wife had worked tirelessly to plant. Friends and colleagues said, it's gonna turn out fine. And that's the last thing he said he wanted to hear as he shoved the last of the boxes into the moving van, saying goodbye to the church that he and his wife had tried so hard to plant for over seven years. It's going to turn out fine, and its many forms hung over his head like an ax, a cheerful denunciation of his apparent failures. Friends and colleagues said, just go ahead and try. What could go wrong? He said a lot, as it turns out, could go wrong. Why don't you try this or that? Surely it's going to help. And it hadn't. Don't give up. Just trust God. He poses the question, was my broken body and my spirit confirmation of my faithlessness? Joshua Davis goes on to offer us two important insights today. The first one is this. We live in a culture that is addicted to the belief that a happy ending is always just right around the corner. He goes on to say that I had to learn the hard way that the belief that everything will magically fix itself is sometimes the very worst form of reality denial. He goes on to add this point. There's a difference between hope and optimism. 
even though our culture frequently conflates the two. Hope does not need circumstances in order to take root. Sometimes all it needs is a shoot peeking out tentatively out of a stump of a now dead tree. In our scripture reading the day, the Apostle Paul takes us even further in our exploration of both hope. The Apostle Paul in this, our sermon, in our scripture text today, is saying that hope is not something that we have, it's something that we practice. Paul's talk of hope in our scripture today is framed in practice. And by attending to the practices of steadfastness and endurance and hospitality, we encounter God and we renew our hope. We roll up our sleeves, we get busy, and somewhere along the line, hope stands beside us like an unexpected friend. Paul's second point for us this morning is this, that hope is an intention more than a feeling. We hope the same way that we decide to go out and take a walk or to clean the dishes. And in doing so, when we act for the future that we hope, we become filled with hope, regardless of how the future actually turns out. And then his last point for us today is this. You don't need to feel hopeful to choose hope. You don't have to feel hopeful to choose hope. Rather, it's a decision that we make in daily cooperation with God to live out of hope, to practice hope, and to trust that it will be enough. In their book, Rising Hope, Casey Gwynn and Shan Hellman offer a compelling insight into the cutting-edge science and science of hope. Their research and findings are used by schools and social services agencies and other disciplines, not only in Oklahoma, but across the nation. I met Chan a couple of years ago when he was speaking at a meeting of local, service, service, uh, local social services agencies. Chan, a professor at OU, is the founding director of the Hope Research Center. He and author Casey Gwynn both survived hard scribal lives as children and teens and have been working together for more than 10 years. The basis for their work in hope rising is found in what has become known as hope theory, developed by a psychologist, C.R. Snyder. Specifically, Snyder focuses on the interaction between three concepts in defining hope. Goals, pathways or way power, and agency or willpower. Goals are defined as uh, the object of our ambition. It's the aim and the result of what we're trying to achieve. And our goals are critical in anchoring and directing our hope. And these goals can either be short or long term. Way power are pathways are feasible routes to achieving a goal. This also includes having a plan when obstacles co come up and even having alternate pathways. The pathways are always a series of steps. Willpower or agency is that sustained motivational aspect of hope. And it's our ability to de dedicate mental energy to begin and sustain the journey to our goals. And for most of us, our level of agency is positively impacted when we have supporters encouraging us to pursue our goals. Both willpower and way power are needed. When you have pathways but you have no willpower, a goal can't re be reached. And a willpower without pathways is just a wish. There's a slant saying, it says, if there's a will, there's a way. It's a great slogan, but it's not always true. Now, it's useful to understand hope theory in a two-dimensional diagram. 
but what it actually looks like in our lives is more like a minivan full of small children heading out on a trip. <coughs> Maybe a short trip or it may be a trip across the country. Yes, goals and pathways and willpower, they're all on board. But also on board are things like our daily burdens, our physical health, our age, the impact of childhood trauma, our mental health, our history, our nutrition, our socioeconomic status, addiction, and so much more. Needless to say, the interplay between everything on board impacts our ability to follow our pathways and remain motivated to reach our goal. So today, beloved, if your minivan is pulled over to the side of the road, it's okay. This pit stop is not your destination. It's just that maybe somebody's thrown up in the back, or you've had a blowout, or maybe you've just taken a wrong turn. Be gentle with yourself and work to rearrange the passengers so that your pathways and your willpower and your goals are up front. Perhaps you're in a season where you need some help getting your minivan back on the road. As a community of faith, we can help one another by being encouragers. And we can also help when needed by offering people of all ages and circumstances help in identifying feasible pathways to reach their goals. Teenagers and, chil and, and children, particularly those growing up in hard scrabble circumstances, need encouragers and mentors to help them understand and develop the practice of hope in their lives. Beloved, as we move from this season of Advent and Christmas to that which awaits us in the unfolding days ahead, always remember that we go with a God of steadfastness and encouragement leading the way as we practice hope. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.